Amen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Blessings, blessings, blessings. We thank God for another Bible study and the study of his word. I'm excited about this teaching this afternoon. I'm excited about all of God's teachings or whenever he gives me an opportunity to teach his word. Um, but I'm excited about, especially about this teaching, because as I was in prayer, my plan was to teach um, about the joy of the Lord um, as we go through the fruit of the spirit. As I started with love and um, started with peace, second one was peace, and then I wanted to talk about the joy of the Lord. But I think this is fitting, the teaching of this day and time of the promises of God, understanding the promises of God and what his word says and things that he has promised us. Even in this day and time, I think um, all that we have been experiencing with this pandemic and and all the different things that's going on throughout this world, uh, one thing we cannot forget is the promises of God. And so I want to encourage you through the word of God to hold on to the promises of God. Um, and we're going to get into this study on this afternoon. I have you know, a few scripture that I want to, to read and expound on to encourage you in the faith um, about the promises of God, about the promises of promises of God. And so I'm just going to open up with prayer. I see a few of you are jumping on and I thank God for you jumping on. I pray that this teaching is a blessing to you. I pray it builds you up in the faith. I pray that it edifies. I pray that it encourages you to hold on to the promises of God. Amen. So Father in heaven, we just come to you right now. We thank you, Father God, for another opportunity of study of your word. We thank you for this beautiful day that you allowed us to see, Father God, even though it's raining right now, Lord God. You still deserve the glory and the praise, Father God. And so I just pray right now, Lord God, that you bless this teaching. I pray, Father God, that you go forth, that you teach, um, you expound, you open this lesson up, Father God. Give us an ear to hear what you have to say, Father God. Um, comfort our hearts even now, Father God, because I don't know, Father God, who may hear this teaching, who's going through what right now, who's experiencing what. But, Father God, I believe this teaching will help liberate them. I believe this teaching that you're going to teach, Father God, will help uplift them and encourage them and help them to refocus, Father God. Sometimes we have so much going on in our lives. We need teachings and lessons like this, Father God, that will help us refocus and focus more on you rather than our situations, Father God. So forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for simple, sinful things that we said, we thought, we acted, reacted. Anything that we did, Lord God, um, that it was not pleasing in, in your eyesight, pleasing to your ears, Father God, we just pray that you have mercy upon us, Father God, and help us not to continue to do the things, Lord God, that displeases you, Father God. Um, and so we'll forever give your name the praise, glory, and honor, but have your way in this teaching. We pray once again, Lord God, whoever tunes in, Father God, we pray that they share it. We pray that they are empowered. Um, they receive clarity and understanding. Any things we ask in Jesus' name, amen. amen. So we thank God for tonight for this teaching. I wanted to open up with the definition of promises, and it deals with declarations or assurances that God will do or fulfill a particular thing that will happen or will happen. So in other words, Whatever, when God has declared something, which it should bring us some type of an assurance because God spoke it. And we always quote the one scripture that his word can't return back to him void. In other words, whatever he promised, whatever God breathed, whatever God has said, it must fulfill the very thing that when he spoke it or it was sent to do. So that in itself should give us confidence in God, confidence in his word. That when God spoke, that we know that his word at some point, sometime, or don't know exactly what season of our life, but that word will be fulfilled. It will come to pass. And a couple of other definitions I found with promise was security. That when God speaks, it should give us some type of security. It should give us hope because God has spoken. It. Not We're not talking about man because man is said a lot of different things. And we put a lot of our hope and trust in man sometimes. And what happens is when you put your trust in man and what man says, man will fail you sometimes. But God has never failed. God is undefeated. 
There is nothing that God has spoken or declared that has not came to pass or will come to pass. And so knowing these two things, that should give us confidence that, look, God is true. His word is true. God's word right now is yet being fulfilled. Um, whether you believe in God or not, whether you believe in the word of God or not, um, the word of God is being fulfilled at this very moment. And for those who don't believe in God and his word, you just missed the revelation. You miss what God is, is revealing to us. That's, you know, that's not my fault. That's your fault because that's your choice not to believe in God or believe in his word. You know, a lot of people don't believe in God's word because they said when man wrote it, you know, and I, and I kind of dealt with that the other day, how man did write the Bible, but God inspired him to write. In other words, the men that he inspired to write um, was moved by the scriptures, by the Holy Ghost. He was moved by the spirit of God. That man just didn't write what he wanted to write. He wrote what God um, put in his mouth or gave him to write. And so God is yet revealing himself, and he wants us on this afternoon to be reminded of his promises, to hold on to his promises, to keep his promises. Listen, the promises of God will help you get through any season of your life because I know that God has spoken this, and what he has spoken is fitting for my season. Is fitting for my time that I'm in. Okay? And so whatever God declared, um, the insurance, it, there, there is an assurance. There's a song that I grew up listening to and, and singing when I grew up in the Baptist church. It talked about blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. And no, it, it is a blessed assurance that when, when God declared something, when God spoke, it gave me assurance that, listen, God spoke it, it's going to happen. God spoke it, it's going to come to pass. And, and the assurance of it is that God will do it. There is nothing that the God has declared in his word or in your prayer time he has declared in your life that's not going to come to pass. Our frustration is that God has spoken it, but because it has not manifested yet, we get frustrated with God as if God's word is not true. No, his word is true. We have to understand, understand it. In the spiritual realm, it's already done. It's already done. We're waiting, we're waiting for the manifestations in the natural. But if you believe it's already done, then take your mind off the fact of just waiting for it in the, man, the manifestations of it. God, I, I believe in you. I believe in your word. I believe it's already done in the spirit. Lord, let your will be done. And just worship and serve God. And in that, at that appointed time, that thing will manifest in the natural. But we get uh, distracted sometimes because we prayed about something. We may have got confirmation in our prayer time, but we get so antsy. We, you know, we try to pressure God and make it happen faster. God has a set time. But just know that if God has spoken it or God has promised it, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to come to pass. No matter what it is, it's going to come to pass. Hold on to the promises of God. I want to open up. Um, on this afternoon um, with 2 Peter. I thought it was fitting um, to open this scripture up for this afternoon. 2 Peter, the first chapter. Um, 2 Peter, first chapter, verses 3 and 4. And I got excited just as I went over these scriptures um, just to teach and to minister to you this afternoon. Um, 1 Peter, the first chapter, verses 3 and 4. It reads this way. Watch this. Blessed be the God of Father, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundance of mercy. No, second Peter, I'm sorry. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Here we go. Watch this. His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through. The knowledge of him. So God has given us, through him, he has given us divine power. And the divine power that is given to us um, that pertains to this life. We're talking about the godly life that he's calling us to live in this lifetime. It's just through the knowledge that as I obtain knowledge of him, okay, who has called us by, so it's God that has called us by his own glory and excellence. The God that we serve is a God of excellence, and it's he that has called us. We don't call ourselves. It's he that has called us. 
And he has given us divine, divine, um, godly power. He's given us power that's from him. It says, and glory and excellence, watch this, by which he has given to us exceedingly, exceedingly, it, it, it goes beyond your expectations. Okay? See, we have expectations, and then God will exceed or exceedingly beyond our expectations. So it says here, exceedingly great and precious promises. God has precious promises according to his word. For us. He says, so that through these things you might be partakers of the divine nature, God who is divine nature, and escape the corrupt that is in the world through lust. That this world is corrupt. There are people that, and what makes it corrupt is, as the scripture says, he says, escape the lust of this world. What makes this world so corrupt? Is because of the lust. Um, people trying to fulfill their own desires. They're looking to the world to fulfill their passions and desires rather than look to God. God is calling us in this time to look to him to fulfill um, our desires. That the things of God is fulfilling, not the things of this world. But the key is God has precious promises, things that he has spoken you know, just as he knew Jeremiah before he was in, in his mother's womb, God yet knew us. And God yet, as he declared over Jeremiah's life, who Jeremiah was, and the things that he had in store for Jeremiah, understand that God yet declared um, his word over our life and things that he yet has for us. There's yet promises that God has declared over our life. And these things, as we are obedient by faith, they will be fulfilled. They will be fulfilled, so you can hold on to these things. But there are precious promises, is what I want you to get in your spirit. And these precious promises are exceedingly great. They're exceedingly. The promises of God goes beyond your expectation. You know, when sometimes somebody can promise us something, and we get excited about the little promise. You know, they promise us they're going to take us this place or give us this gift. You know how you promise your children things, and your, your children get so excited. All you told them was, hey, I'm taking you to Cedar Point, or, or I'm, you know, I'm going to get this, 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 this game. Or you, do, you, you promised them that you would do it, and from the time that you have spoken it, they're waiting for it. Listen, we should have that same an anticipation for God and his word, that when God has declared his word over our life, or we read the word of God and what he has promised us, we should be in anticipation like, Lord, I can't wait. Lord, I'm, 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 I'm going to serve you and worship you as I wait for the things that you have promised me. And there are some things that are far off, but there are some things that God has promised us that we can experience right now. I don't want you to think that all the promises of God, we got to wait till we get to heaven. No, you can experience the promises of God today, right now. Matter of fact, we're experiencing the promise of God right now. There are some things that God has promised us according to his word. I'm going to go through these scriptures that we are experiencing right now. Even in this pandemic. Even in what's going on. God says there I have still my promises are not interrupted by this pandemic. This pandemic does not disqualify or stop God from fulfilling his promises in your life. And if you're a born again believer... You're experiencing them right now. So one of the scriptures I would like to go to as I, as I continue this is Isaiah, the 40, 40, 41st chapter, verses 8 through 10. And the promise I'm looking at is that, you know, God will be with you. One of the things I think we struggle with as believers is understanding that God is going to be with us. And I know sometimes... We go through seasons and moments where it seems as if God, it seems as if he's so far away. Like, Lord, where are you? Because we are looking at things from a natural perspective, you know, um, and, and, and we're, if we're in that moment where we're wavering in the faith or we're having a struggling moment, you know, we're like, God, where are you? And God, you know, God's right there. God is a keeper of his word. He's right there. But I'm reading these scriptures and expounding on them to encourage you. So Isaiah 41, 
um, 8 through 10. Watch this. It says, but you, Israel, are my servant, Jacob, who I have chosen. Now, you know, Jacob's name was turned to Israel when he wrestled with him. He says, the seed of Abraham, my friend, you whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and have called from the remotest or the furthest part and said to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not rejected you. Okay? So whenever you're experiencing rejection, do not be discouraged. God has not rejected you. Man may have rejected you, but if God says, I have chosen you, he has not rejected you. He's chosen you. He has set you aside for his glory. So don't be overwhelmed or discouraged when people reject you or don't accept you. The key is that God has called you and chosen you. Verse 10 says this, do not fear for what? For I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. Yes, I will uphold you with my right hand or my righteous right hand. So God is comforting us through the prophet Isaiah. He speaks to the children of Israel. And he's letting them, know, letting them know that one, he says, don't fear. I know we're in the season of this pandemic and God is still saying, don't fear. If you are taking the proper precautions that has been given to us from our governor or, or from our mayor or whatever the case may be, if you're taking those proper cautions, precautions, then there's no reason to fear. Okay? There is no reason to fear if I'm doing, if I'm taking my proper precautions. God is yet trying to comfort us to let us know there's no reason to fear because why? I'm keeping my promise. My promise is I'm with you. My promise is I'm right here with you. Even in this pandemic, God has not left you. God's hand is still on you. God's hand is still protecting you. God's hand is still keeping you, okay? He says, do not fear Israel. Do not fear my chosen people. You are chosen by God, for I am with you. He said, don't be dismayed, okay? Don't start worrying, okay? Don't be dismayed, for I am your God. He says, I will strengthen you. Sometimes you get weak. Sometimes you get weary. And I'm going to talk more about that because there's another scripture I'm going to go to that deals with when we get weary. But he says, I will strengthen you. At times, when we get dismayed, at times when our faith begins to, to get, sway a little bit, God says, I'll strengthen you. And then he also said, not only will I strengthen you, he says, I will help you. So God is saying, listen, even in the midst of what you're going through right now, in this pandemic and whatever else you're experiencing personally in your life, God says, not only will I strengthen you, but I will help you. Okay, so in other words, you don't have to go through life as if you're going through it by yourself. Sometimes we, we try to we rely on people so much to the point where God will position us in a place where the only person you can look to is him. That's what God is doing in this time. You can't, you can't look to your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad. You can't look to nobody else right now because God is the only one that's going to carry you through. He's the only one that's going to keep you. And he says, I will uphold you. He said, I will hold you up with my righteous, God is righteous, right hand. He's talking about with my right hand is dealing with his power and his authority. God says, I, I, I hold you up. I keep you in my right hand. Next scripture, it's been confirmed here that God is keeping his promise because he's with us. I already talked about strength. God will strengthen us. Here it is, Isaiah 40, 28 through 31, it says this, have you not known, have you not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, listen, the big bang theory is not how we got here, okay, we are created in his image, God is our creator, now, now you've heard me say several times that God is the creator of this world, he's the creator of us, but he's not the father of all of us. Okay, you that don't believe in him, you that don't believe in Jesus, you don't worship him. Okay, I'm not talking about you worshiping nature. No, you cannot worship what God created. You must worship the one that created the nature, created the trees. So let's not 
missed that, missed that. But we must worship the right one. He says, of the ends of the earth. He says, does not faint. The God that we serve, the God that yet created us, does not faint. Nor is he weary. He don't get tired. The God that we serve never gets tired. First of all, God is a spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That means you must have the spirit. You must believe that he is the truth. And you must have his truth in your heart. The only way you can worship him. Okay? But it says here, but verse 29 says, he doesn't faint. He don't get tired. He don't get weary. But it says he gives power to those who faint. In other words, he strengthens those who are about to give up. And those, and to those who have no might, he increases their strength. So here it is. God says, when you get weary and tired, you feel like giving up, God says, I'll strengthen you. God says, I will empower you. He will do it. This is God's promises. When you lean on him, God says, I will strengthen you. See, the problem is we're leaning on the wrong things. And you want God to empower you. But if what you're leaning on is not of God, then you're not going to get the power. You're not going to be strengthened. Okay? We have to learn how to lean on God and the things of God. When I say the things of God, I'm talking about the word of God. Learn how to lean on God and his word. The Bible says heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall remain. So the one thing God cannot go against is what he breathed, what he declared. Can't go against it. But watch this. It says, increase your strength. Verse 30 says, even the youth, even in our youthfulness, shall faint and be weary. Even as young as I am, I may faint. I may get tired sometimes. I may be ready to throw in the towel. Okay? He says, and the young men shall utterly fall. In other words, young men rely on their own strength. Young men feel like, oh, I'm strong enough. The older I get, the more I'm learning to lean on God. Let that bless you. What? Because I'm in a position now, see, at, at 30, I knew I needed God, but God, I, I still felt because I was younger, I can do something. But now that I'm getting older and my seasons are changing, God says, listen, I'm the only way you're going to get through from season to season. God says, I'm the only way you're going to get through. Because it, it, it will look like some seasons that you are in was going to take you out of here. But if you remember and hold on to the promises of God, I don't care how dark your season is, God's promises will carry you through. But it says this, verse 31, bless me. But those who what? Wait upon the Lord. You got to learn how to wait. Now, waiting on the Lord is just not sitting and twiddling in your thumbs. No, waiting on the Lord is I'm going to keep praising. Waiting on the Lord, I'm going to keep trusting him. Waiting on the Lord is I'm going to keep praying. Waiting on the Lord is keep doing the very things that God has instructed you to do. Watch this. Until what? Until he renews your strength. See, we need to mature in the faith as believers that I have to learn how to be steadfast, unmovable, and remain in the things of God until God strengthened me. You have to learn how to do that. Listen, it's time for the church, it's time for the believer to mature in the faith. Okay, there was a time and season we, you know, that we we held your hand and we, we and we walked with you. But now you need to come to the point in time where you mature and you learn how to stand on your own. There's nothing that was more encouraging than when my children learn how to stand on their own. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. They're two and three, and they learn how to pull themselves up and stand on their own. They learn how to hold on to things. They weren't holding on to daddy, but they learn how to hold on to things and walk. That's what God is calling you to do. God says, it's not that I'm not there, but you got to learn how to hold on to the things of God. But God says, but those who wait upon me, he says, I will renew your strength. You shall mount up with wings as an eagle. You know, the, the eagle's wings are very strong, and they can soar. 
they soar as the wind may come underneath they soar above the storms listen God saying you can soar above the storms too you can it doesn't matter what storm you're facing you can soar above the storms he says they shall mount up of wings as an eagle they shall run and not get weary God can strengthen you that you can run this Christian journey that you won't get weary as long as you're trusting in his promises this is God's promise to you that you can run this Christian journey and if you get weary he says I'll strengthen you I'll keep you he says and they shall walk and not faint the Bible says men shall always pray and faint not in other words there are some believers because of lack of prayer they faint but you're finding out that if I just keep praying if I just keep believing if I just keep seeking the face of God that I will not faint. You got to learn how to trust God and his promises. Let's go to the next verse. I'm going to go to Psalms. Know this, that God will answer you. God will answer you. You know he'll strengthen you. You know that he's with you. But God will answer you. Some of you are struggling right now because you've been praying. And you say, God, I wonder if God hears me. I've never, you, some of you never heard God speak and you say I wonder if he hears me now we got enough scripture that supports that if you're born again he hears you but this psalm in particular and it was three psalms that I looked up I'm only going to read one Psalms 120 and I know it goes here it is Psalms 120 and 1 he says in my distress I cried unto the Lord and he heard me deliver my soul, O Lord, from my lying lips and from my deceitful tongue. But the key is that he called upon the Lord and the Lord heard him. He was distressed. He was irritated. He was burnt out. Felt like giving up. But he called on the Lord. And when you call on the Lord, the Lord does hear you. Don't think as a, as a child of God that God doesn't hear you. God sees your weeping. God sees your worry. But he hears you. Romans 10, 10 13 says, Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord, he says, I'll save him. Shall be saved. So God hears. He hears you. That, that, that sinner, that person they don't believe, they have an experience or encounter with God, and, and they call upon the name of the Lord. Lord will save them. Lord will clean up their life. James 5 and 16 says the prayer of the righteous man, that we're made righteous, and that when we pray, God says Obey, our prayers availeth much. That God hears your prayers. These are promises that when you call upon him, God doesn't close his eyes or close his ears. God doesn't turn from you. No, he hears you. You have to trust the fact that I heard God. I, I know, let me say it like this, that I prayed and I know God heard me. You got to start looking at things from a different perspective. Lord, I pray and I believe by faith that you heard my prayer. Now, Lord, I'm going to on, go on with my day believing that you heard my prayer. Because, Lord, you said I'm the righteous. You made me righteous. You put me in a position that I can pray and I can talk to you and I can commune with you. And everything that I need, I can get it from you. Anything that you need, the Lord got it. One of my favorite scriptures, you know, the Lord won't withhold any good thing. Everything of God is good. Everything he created is good. Now, just because man has corrupted it, that doesn't mean that it wasn't good in God's intent when he made it. Everything God created is good. So just know that when you call upon him, he will answer. I know sometimes you call upon him and you're tired and you feel like giving up, but God will still answer you. Next scripture, Psalms 121 and 5. God will protect you. He will protect you. Yes, he will. He will protect you. The scripture says, 
The Lord is, is your guardian. He is your protector. He's your guardian. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. This scripture is talking about as I studied it, that when men were in battle, they had their sword in their right hand and their shield would protect them on the left side. But the right side of them, because they only had a sword but no shield, was left open and vulnerable. So in other words, their shield can only cover so much of their body, can only protect them from an attack. So when the Lord says he's that shade upon thy right hand, he's actually saying that I even cover you where you're vulnerable at. Now some of you have some vulnerable areas and God says I'm covering you in this season. Some of you, your health is not where you may want it to be and you're so afraid of this pandemic because you're diabetic or because you have asthma or because you have allergies real bad or, and, and, or whatever the case may be and you're afraid because you're vulnerable because of how this pandemic, this virus has been affecting people's body. People have been dying, seem to be left and right. The media has not helped us because they seem to, to make it look worse than what it is. But God is saying, listen, let this bless you, that I am your shade. Wherever you're vulnerable at, God said, I cover you. Wherever you're vulnerable, God says, I am your protector. One of the things I love that we have angels that are assigned to us and sometimes I pray, I say, Lord, I pray that the angels that are assigned to my life cover me in my front, cover my sides, cover my back. God will protect you. God will protect you. You just have to trust in him. I know what it is. I know, I know right now people saying, I, I got to get a gun and I, I, I got to get my gun license. I got to do this. Listen, I'm not against it if you feel you got to do it. But God has kept me. I know what it is to be shot at, guns pulled on me, robbed at gunpoint. I could have died at any given time. But now that I'm older and mature, seeing that God says I was that shade, where you were vulnerable, God protected me. So I know God will protect you. I know he will. I know we're living in a time you say, man, I got to get my gun license. I got to get to the range so I can, I get it, I get it. That if that's where you're at, I respect it. I'm not against it. I'm not condemning you. But the reality of it is, if there's going to be some times that you don't have your gun, and I'm here to tell you, God will protect you. He will keep you. He's kept me at gunpoint. He's kept me. He's kept me. God is yet keeping his promises. So he'll protect you. He can protect you from this virus. Take all the precautions. Trust in God and the precautions. He will protect you. God will give you peace. He will give you peace. Some of you need peace of mind right now. God will give you peace. Some of you are still frazzled because of this virus. This virus has driven you crazy because every time you leave the house, you got your mask on, but you're still afraid if you're going to catch something. You're still afraid as if, you know, I wonder if this virus can, can I still contract this virus even though I got a mask on? You just seem so vulnerable no matter what. Listen, not only will God protect you, but he'll give you peace. Proverbs 1 and 33 says, but whoever listens to me will dwell in safety. Will, will dwell peacefully. You got to learn how to listen to God. You got to learn how to trust his word. He says, if you just listen to me, listen follows action. You received, the, you, you heard the instructions, but God knows you listening by you walking out the instructions. Listen, he'll give you peace. The reason why I have a peace of mind is because my hope is in God. My hope is in God. I'm trusting in God. That's where my hope lies. It's in God. And so the more I listen to God, the more I obey his word, the more peace that I have. Because my trust is in him. 
You got to learn that God breathed this word. This, this word is alive. And the more you put your hope in his word, the more it's alive in your life. See, if you just believe some of this word is true and, and some of it is not true, then the word of God ain't going to... When I say it, it's not going to work for you, you won't see the God, God's word working in your life. You tie God's hands when you don't believe in him or his word. God is saying, I want to perform my word in your life. He wants to perform his word in your life. But you're like, oh man, Lord, I don't, I don't know about this scripture. But God keeps his promises. He keeps his promises. Just know God is, not only he will keep you in peace, but he's your provider. They're saying that a second wave of this pandemic is coming. And it's, it's floating through the media. It's floating through it. And now, your antennas is up. What, what are we going to do? Some of you has already started stocking up. I get it. That's using wisdom. Because if it does go down, and you're like, I want to use wisdom. But one thing you must not forget is who you trust in. That God is my provider. God is my keeper. Philippians 4 and 19 says this, but I have everything and abound. No, I'm sorry. Verse 19 says, but my God shall supply your every need. God says, listen, when you trust in me, my promise to you is that I'm going to supply your every need. Whatever it is that you feel that you need, God says, I will supply it. According to his riches and glory to Christ Jesus. Because we are in Christ and Christ is in us, God says, I will supply your needs. Whatever it is that you need, this is God's promise to you. But you got to believe in who's supplying. See, the grocery store ain't supplying. Because right now, I guarantee you can go to some grocery stores and they may not have what you need. But God's saying, listen, when you put your trust in me, I will supply your need. I'm able to do what the grocery stores can't do. That's why the Bible says, man should not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. In other words, when, when, I'm, when I'm feasting off of the word of God, God's word can fill me. There's been countless times that I read the word of God and studied the word of God and I was full off the word that I didn't have a natural appetite. God can do it. But you have to look to him. God can fill the, any void that you have in your life. The promises of God will cover it. Any void that you have in your life, God can fill you. Some of you have voids in your life and you're still trying to pull on the world. You're still trying to pull on people to fill your void. God said, your void will never be fulfilled that way. God says, I shall supply all of your needs according to my riches and my glory. See, this natural world will run out of resources. They'll run out, but the one that never runs out is God. God will never run out. My last verse I have for you today. One of his promises that God loves you. God loves you. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world. I know it's some people that you don't like, but God still loves them. There's some people in this world that you don't care for, but God still loves them. He says, He loved the world so much that He sent His Son he sent his son to show his love. Now these folk that he died for, some of them don't believe in him, some of them don't worship him. But God says, I still love them. I want, I'm still calling them to come to me. But we need to know that nothing can separate us from the love of God. I'm talking to the believer now. This pandemic can't separate you from the love of God. God says, I love you with an everlasting love. If you don't get nothing out of this lesson on tonight, you know that God loves you. He cares about you. 
He's concerned about you. And God is saying, listen, all these other verses you maybe can't grasp and hold on to. But God says, hold on to my love. Hold on to my love. He says, nothing. I'm, not, I'm talking to the sons and daughters. He said, nothing is going to separate you from my love. Here it is, Romans 8, 37 through, no, I want to read these first ones up here. He says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or your persecution? What about a famine? Can the famine separate me? Or your nakedness? Or pearl or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. That, that all these things that was listed, God says, you're more than conquerors. Through him, there's nothing that we can't go through. There's nothing that we can't conquer. Because Christ is the victorious one. He's already conquered what we were not able to conquer. But now I am more than a conqueror because the one that lives within me has conquered it all. So now I'm a conqueror too. But he says here, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, neither things present nor, nor things to come, neither height nor depth, or any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God says, hold on to my promises. God says, I, I'm not going to allow anything to separate him from you. He said, I'm not going to allow anything to, to interrupt this, 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 this love that I have for you. Now it's us that will try to pull away or separate ourselves from God. But God says, I still love you. Even when you, even when you separate from him, God says, I still love you. His arms are always open. He's always open. His arms are always open waiting for you to come back. Why? Because he loves you. And so I pray that these scriptures that I read has given you some comfort to know that God is keeping his promise. If you're still breathing, God is saying, I'm keeping my promise. I'm showing you that I'm keeping my promise. You and I both know we have done some things that we should not be here. And some situations, we don't know how we got out of it. But I tell you, it's the promises of God that what we were in did not take us out. What we were in didn't take us out. And you're still breathing. Matter of fact, you're not even the same person that you used to be. That when you were in your mess, God still kept his promise. God still loved you in your mess. But now God says, now I have brought you out of that. To show you that I got greater for you. I preached on Sunday that there's miracles, there's blessings and promises ahead of you. God says, I still got promises that have to be fulfilled in your life. God says, there's miracles that he wants to perform. God says, there's blessings that's coming. They're coming. God says, don't look back. I don't care how good you think your life was years ago. God said, don't look back. God says, look ahead because there are miracles promises and blessings ahead of you. They're ahead of you. God says, just look to him. So I thank God for this lesson. Thank God for this time. I thank God for those who tuned in. I pray that these scriptures have helped you to understand that God is with you. God loves you. He's your protector. I don't care how vulnerable you are. God says, he is your shade upon your right hand. He said, I'm, your, I'm the one that's protecting you. 
Wherever you're vulnerable, I'm protecting you. So listen, God bless you. God bless you. Feel free to join us this coming Sunday um, at 1030. We have an awesome man of God and woman of God that will be fellowshipping with us. I've already shared some of the information. I'm excited about them and, and the ministry and things that God has been doing in their life. So please join us on this Sunday. Um, definitely keep all of us in prayer. Keep my wife and I in prayer as we continue to seek the face of God and do the work that God has called us to do. But you definitely join us this coming Sunday. As, as always, I've shared my um, YouTube link. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. Please subscribe. It's a simple subscription. Just click on the link and subscribe. As I said before, I'm not asking for your money, but I'm asking for your subscription. Click on the link and just subscribe. Simple subscription. And you'll see all of our services, all of our teachings. And if this teaching has blessed you, definitely sow a seed if you desire to. But if you don't have a seed to sow, I thank you and appreciate you tuning in. I pray that this lesson has blessed you. Be encouraged. We're getting ready to transition to downtown Youngstown to go pray for those um, that are in need. Pray for those who are broken. And you're more than welcome to come join us downtown Youngstown if you're in the area. We, we, we pray downtown every Thursday at 6 p.m. Every Thursday at 6 p.m., that's where we are. You're more than welcome to join us as the Lord has already gave me the blueprint and, and how he wants me to orchestrate it, but I need your help. So come, come fellowship, come join us. It's just not me, but come join us as we do the work of the Lord. We're sowing seeds of prayer, not to fill a house, not to fill the church house, but we're sowing seeds of prayer so we can see people's lives changed. Don't you want to see somebody's life? Your life has changed. Somebody prayed for you. Now it's time for you to pray for somebody else and see their life change. So God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. If you got the time, come on out. I'm head, I'm getting ready right now as I, as I log off to head downtown to intercede for somebody today. God bless you.